We're delighted to receive this rich business and cultural archive and to be entrusted with its safekeeping and preservation. It's an outstanding testament to Canadian ingenuity. We look forward to collaborating with the National Music Centre to be able to share this collection with the public. This is just a tremendous cultural collection. It's huge. It includes over 5,000 boxes of material, over 21,000 audio media recordings, over 18,000 video recordings. There's demo tapes, master recordings, song lyrics, concert planning, there's promotional material, cover art, correspondence among performers, among producers, among executives. It's a tremendous student resource. It's a tremendous faculty resource. It's just a tremendous opportunity that we can preserve this collection intact. So in that sense, it's a world resource. The story of EMI Music Canada starts in the late 40s, early 50s as the Canadian home of Capitol Records so that it becomes easier and more efficient for us Canadians to get Sinatra records and soon thereafter Beatles records. To have that then become inadvertently a source of so much of the music that me and many Canadians grew up listening to. It's such a rich and treasured history, and it's terrific that there'll be an opportunity for generations to come, starting immediately, to explore that. In the early 60s, we were the first label to invest in Quebec, and from the early 60s, we were investing in repertoire from the rest of the country, like Anne Murray. Beneath its snowy metal, cold and we thought we could develop Canadian culture and sell music from Canadians the same as we sold music from any artist that we represented. We were investing in local music over a decade before Canadian content regulations. The archive, in my view, represents a comprehensive look at Canadian culture in the music world. In music, there's an expression, you go where the heat is. The University of Calgary is a well-respected institution, and they have been a terrific partner, and their enthusiasm and sort of unbridled passion for an educational component around music, uh, and their ambitions with this archive is tremendously exciting to us. Oh, the good old hockey game is the best game you can name. You don't bring a collection like this to one spot and not assume that you want everyone in the world to have access to it. Here in Calgary, we have a very unique opportunity because the National Music Center, located here in Calgary, has been involved in our planning for this collection from the very first. The National Music Center will act as a bridge working closely with the University of Calgary to really unpack those archives and build exhibitions and content around them to help share them with the broader music community. Not only in this community in Calgary, but certainly across the world. I think the EMI archive impact will be that when people realize it's actually here in Calgary at the University of Calgary and that the National Music Center is working closely with the university to help make it more accessible, it will get noticed around the world that we are serious about music, about preserving our country's music history, and about disseminating and celebrating and championing those stories that lie within those archives. This is an exciting gift to the University of Calgary, one that will fuel our research, teaching and learning, and connections to our community for our next 50 years. Yeah.